probably enough. Hi, I'm Mike, um, owner and operator of MarketPiper.com, um, a web analytics company, and um, just here to learn more about uh, connectivity, pretty much. I'm Dane. Uh, my favorite life hack is smooth DIY projects, and I'm a computer science student. My name is Laurel. I work at O'Reilly Media. Um, we're interested in um, all sorts of technology, especially Internet of Things, drones, people. And um, what I'm seeing as a theme here is kindness and how we are kind to each other as we delve more into technology. I'm Heather. I am a citizen of the internet. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> like, the work I do, not super pertinent to this conference. Um, I went to ITP at NYU. It's the Interactive Telecommunications Program, if you want to guess what that actually means. And yeah, I'm just here to listen, mostly. Um, hi, I'm Ivan. I'm a programmer and a computer artist, um, and I teach programming at um, NYU. Um, I just have a general kind of interest in technology. Um, I'm just here to hang out with Heather and you guys. But. Thank you. All right, hi, uh, I'm Ben. I'm the co-founder and CEO of an open source social web platform called Known. Uh, I believe really strongly that the next Facebook is the web. Um, I'm Erin, I'm the other co-founder of Known. So it's an open source platform for running your own websites and connecting with other people online through social networks and through this decentralized network that we're building. Um, and I'm interested in social interactions online and what people do with them. I'm, this is really strange having just a mic. Anyway, I'm Sarah Goss. I'm a student of museum studies. Um, I'm an undergrad. I'm just mostly interested in using of social media as an institution and kind of what that's like and what might be as Facebook and other kind of social medias are evolving. Hi, I'm Yanis. I'm a researcher at uh, the Harvard Design School and my work focuses on uh, urban infrastructure systems and how to use uh, information technology to improve their sustainability. I'm CJ Carr. I make things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Laura Newhouse. I'm interested in our dress codes. Hi, I'm Leo Canty. Um, I don't do any work. I'm done with that. So I pursue things on an intellectual level. And right now, I'm seeking the answer to what will humans do when robots do all the work. I'm, media, right? yeah. I'm Irv, and uh, I'm a professor of computer science. My, uh, a topic that really fascinates me is the unintended consequences of technology, both positive and negative. Ciao, uh, my name is Leah, and I'm a visiting here at Comparative Media Studies. I'm a sociologist, and uh, I'm really interested in that. Yeah, so I'm Patrick, and um, like I said, uh, I studied at Harvard, and I'm also very passionate about technology. Um, so maybe before we start, you wanted to do some introductory yeah. remarks? So, so we all know we are all, on, we all connected all the time. We are always online. And one of the most dynamic developments of the past decade on the online has been the rise of social networks, as we all know that. And the past decade has been really characterized by persistence of content, by shareability of content, right, searchability. Uh, but now that seems to be changing with the rise of the ephemeral apps that are kind of transforming the way we perceive others online, how we are presenting ourselves to others through the internet. Uh, and we're moving towards, it seems like we're moving towards this approach where before we were using all these different social media applications as a form of exhibition. We were just you know, saying something and then it would stay there and people could interact with it at a later point in time. And now it seems like we're moving from the exhibition to the experience for itself with apps like Snapchat or other ephemeral apps. So we wanted to, to, to find out what do you think about what the future of the internet is going to look like. Is it going to be fully ephemeral? Will it be something that uh, will still persist? Is Facebook going to stay? Is Facebook going to be replaced? What, what, in your opinion, is kind of the future of social online? How are we going to interact with each other, let's say, in 10 years? Do you have any ideas about it's, that? So maybe more tangible, you can talk about things that like sort of like problems in your life, like things that are really troubling you right now that you, know, you, you would like to see improve, and then because otherwise it's a little bit you know, off the cuff. Um, so what are some things that 
currently like you're doing and you you see they could be done in a different way or you, they could be done better and then we can we can start from there from a sociological perspective from a design perspective from your personal perspective what do you think and i think it doesn't have to be related to social because as ben was talking about he believes the next uh, facebook is web right so just as when google was the next like people ask what's the next google people didn't re didn't really look in uh, social social networking right so it doesn't have to be that sort of area most likely will not be social networking, which is the next Facebook. Who knows? Right? Yeah. Ben, what do you think? So you said uh, web was important. So, I mean, I think you can think of the apps that we all use. So Facebook, Snapchat, and so on, really still as proofs of concept. We're really at the beginning of development of these technologies. and. I think um, you know the problem that we have right now is we're running, you know, we've we've gone down this road of taking what have been very small proofs of concept uh, to kind of their logical conclusion, which is, you know, very big, you know, billions of users on these proofs of concept, but the because of the way they've been built, a very small number of companies actually own our interactions, and because of that, they actually own the form and content of our interactions as well. Their design decisions actually affect the way we all converse with each other. And so the big uh, change that uh, lots of people, and Tantec has spearheaded a community that um, has, um, has really, you know, help, help, is helping to change that. The, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna see technologies that actually empower us to talk to each other as naturally as, you know, we would face to face, yeah. you know, where we control the form of our communication. But how do you think that would look like, like specifically? Like, you know, I think it would, you know, we're talking about sort of cyborgs here. I think it's very personal. I think it, it isn't a one size fits all kind of mentality. It's actually lots of personal technologies that can talk to each other, you know, that have enough in common yeah. that they can actually interact with each other rather than a one size fits all. We're all using this social wall. We're all using yeah. these profiles kind of experience. Do you see any companies doing that right now? There are some projects that are doing it, doing it right now. We're trying, you know, we're trying to do this. Um, there are other other projects that are doing this. The indie web community is certainly looking at this kind of thing. Okay. There's uh, other. There's certainly projects that are up and coming. That is beginning. We're beginning to see a uh, swing back towards individuality. I think on the internet. Mm -hmm. So this is quite quite interesting. So you're mentioning individuality and kind of a conscious refusal of the existing human platforms, right? And this is what Tandek has been doing as well, right? Saying, I have my own website, I put my content on my own website, and only then link that to Twitter so that people can interact with it. Could you maybe talk kind of more about the philosophy that you have? Sure. So uh, I actually thought your, your first question about t what's going to be in 10 years, what was, the, what was the question again? Can you repeat the question about 10 years? So, 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 uh, what what is the social internet going to look like in ten years? Okay. Is it going to be like people having like their own websites? Is it going to be really individual, or what do you think about it? So, how many of you had pagers or ever had a pager? Anybody? Some people. Okay, a few. Of you. How many of you have pagers today? None of you. <laughs> okay. Um, so here's my prediction. I'll start with this. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I gave up a phone number. I don't have a phone number anymore. I just use this device. You can call it a phone. It kind of vaguely gives you that kind of functionality. Um, in 10 years, I predict all of you will have your own site. You'll just call it a site. Like I, in, I have a site, and it'll be tied to one or more of your devices that'll just work, seamlessly pair with each other. Um, some of you will probably still have phones to sort of talk to the old world. Um, and in 20 years, none of you will have phones, just like today, none of you have pagers and, or fax machines. And, and, and all you will have is you'll have a site. You'll buy a device. You'll, you'll pay some provider for site service. And that's how you'll interact with everyone. You'll sign into things with your site. It'll just be a thing that everyone just has a site. Just like today, everyone has a cell. And, and it's, such a, it's one of those like obvious, profound changes that's going gonna, gonna to happen and flip so fast that people will be like, well, of course that was going to happen. Why didn't we all see it coming? And some of us are actively working to make that happen as fast as possible. Can you talk a little bit about, about your own work and how you're trying to make that happen? Okay, just really briefly. Uh, in 2009, I got very frustrated with Twitter. So essentially, I built a clone for publishing short text notes on my own site. And from then, I decided, starting with 2010, January 1st, I would no longer post content first on Twitter. So since then, every tweet that you see from at T got posted to tontic.com, copied to Twitter, 
And then from there, Twitter copied it to Facebook. I also don't po post natively on Facebook either. Um, last year, because my parents started calling me on FaceTime instead of on the phone, I decided, oh, well, let me see if I can just use my iPod and not my cell phone, which I'll leave in my backpack. And so then this year, I stopped using that. So like phone number as identity is one of those things that will also go away, okay. I predict. Because we're going to tie all these things and make it much easier for people to do. So speaking of identity, are you seeing that um, a site identifier will be much easier to actually identify who people are versus a social security number or a telephone number? Um, like John Smith, right? He's kind of screwed if he has johnsmith.com. So he has to somehow have a very unique identifier, but then also we use identity to um, confirm so many things, include purchases, mm -hmm. you know, important real life scenarios. So what does the site kind of, is it a number? Is it always still going to be a number? Well, do you, you know your own phone number, right? Do you know all your credit card numbers? No. Do you know, do you know your IP address? No. So the same thing will be true. I see what you're saying, yeah. yeah. So one number for all the things. Well, it won't be a number. Oh, It'll just be it. your name or okay. your site that you've chosen yeah. by whatever name. Like phone numbers are better, no better than IP addresses. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. To, it's just as ridiculous to remember a phone number as it is to remember an IP address. Yeah, interesting. It makes no sense. Right. And, and this, this actually brings us, bring us to a really interesting point about identity and what it means uh, online, right? Because we are given a name. There is a wallet name, as we call it, right? Some, something that's on your ID, something on, that's on your credit card. But uh, online, if you, if you come to create your own site, you can choose the name you want to be identified with, right? So wh what do you think about kind of the real name web? What do you think about the, the implications of choosing your own name and having the freedom of you know, choosing an, an identity marker that will be there potentially forever online? Uh, have you seen the movie Her? Her, and uh, there was also, uh, sorry for my English, I just came from Italy. Um, there is um, also this, uh, a lot of conference here in MIT about uh, wearable technologies and uh, about someone, an uh, inhuman actor that talked to you saying, uh, could be your coach, could be um, so I, I think that uh, it's, uh, of course, an old question. The philosopher Bruno Latour uh, talked about reassembling so, so the social, to think the social as uh, an interaction between human and uh, non-human actors. And uh, also you can have uh, this kind of uh, identity uh, that, um, that come out from this, the interaction with uh, this non-human. Um, now we can see just a trace of, of this uh, when you buy things to Amazon, Amazon, after Amazon tell you who are you. Like, uh, you can be interested in this and that, and, uh, and uh, there is a kind of uh, a memory uh, of you there that is also a construction, a dynamic construction of your identity. So if I think uh, uh, an interactive world in the future, I think a kind of, uh, you know, uh, mixed uh, um, talking about uh, yourself also. Do you think that uh, such an identity should be fluid or should it be fixed with a certain site? Should, should it be something that crosses different platforms or should it be, or would you want to have an identity on each and every single platform like Amazon and so on? Uh, I think that uh, um, I, I'm not deterministic. So it, you know, there is a, in, in technological terms, there is a, uh, there is a, a cultural change first that meet a technology, and I think that uh, uh, it has be uh, it will be really fluid, really fluid. But uh, uh, we maybe there is no 
at the moment a technology that you can, for example, yesterday, I don't know, there was a, an interesting, an interesting uh, conference on news, how we, you know, how we uh, uh, stay uh, all the time uh, uh, in contact and in, in connection with news. And uh, if you, you know, frontline, uh, stuff like that. And uh, they are looking uh, at the mobile. The mobile, it will be the, the future. But now there is no a technology that support this because of a, a technical technological problem but we i think everything is will be will be converged in one in one platform that is really well this is a, this, yeah, yeah. so if if i understood your question you were wondering is it a good idea if we have one identity on all platforms and i guess i would wonder if it's a good idea that we have one identity at all. Um, I mean, we do have different personas in different environments, right? I'm in my professional persona right now, and later I'll be in a playful persona with my family. Uh, should it be that all those personas should be merged into one, or should they be separated? So I think there's a point to be made there about control and choice and going back to this morning, privacy. I mean, we all have you know, really, we do all have different identities. Uh, we all have different facets to who we are. Some of those identities are more public than others. And really, it's got to be, I mean, the danger is if we have an identifier that is enforced on us, and it is enforced that we have a single identifier. If we have the ability to create as many identifiers as we need, that's an empowering platform. That allows us to communicate as we do in real life. Um, and there's a real difference there, and there's, I think that's something that the existing social platforms really struggle with, and partially because they don't have a broad awareness because of their sort of composition of, of the different uh, kinds of identities and the different kinds of struggles that people can actually have. I would add to that also, we've done a lot of talking over the last few months with a whole variety of different people from all different wakes of life to find out what they think about their identity and their profiles online and how they use social media and how they use their websites. Um, and there are definitely people out there who have in their mind a sort of singular online identity and they maintain that across their various social profiles and different websites that they participate in. And then some people very much cater personas of themselves to different social networks. Um, and a lot of times it comes down to the audience and the community on those social networks. And some people have said it's easier if they understand the audience or the community on that social network, it's easier for them to understand who they're communicating with. And then they tailor that persona, that part of themselves and their communications to that audience or that community. And if they join a new social network or a new group of people where they don't have a clear understanding of who those people are, it's harder for them to interact because they're not really sure like what, what part of me am I showcasing? What kind of conversations are we having? So you might hear people say um, they have a profile on LinkedIn and that's a very professional business side of themselves and they have a profile on Facebook and that's a very personal family side of themselves and they don't necessarily want those two merged together and really closely tied as a singular identity but other people um, don't care as much and are much uh, ha don't mind as much having all those tied together and just sort of sharing the same information with all those groups of people and some people draw very strong lines and to the point of using completely different names, different avatars, different images with different groups of people and different communities online. Do you think we'll see more segmentation or less segmentation of identities online? I think the closest thing I could think of right now is it's sort of like email addresses. We probably all have at least one email address and probably we've had more than one over time. Um, some of us probably have just one main email address right now that we use. Some of us might have a personal email address and a work email address and our work email address might have changed over time. And some people have a single email address that they actually share with their family and that family just uses one email address 
and that is the singular address that that group of people used to communicate with other people. And we have the ability right now, if we wanted, to set up multiple email addresses associated with different jobs or different projects or different aspects of our lives or different groups of people that we're communicating with. And I think it depends on the individual and who they're, who they're trying to reach, um, who they're communicating with. And it is very easy right now for lots of people to establish those sort of channels of communication. And I think in the future, maybe email addresses aren't the primary method of communication, but whatever is the primary method of communication, people will probably treat that in a similar way. So I just want to add a really uh, short addition to that, which is that I have four primary email addresses right now, and it's a complete pain in the ass. It's um, And so anything that allows, you know, and I definitely have more facets than that to my identity, so whatever platform exists in the future has to be easier than managing, you know, my four email addresses on this phone, uh, which is just cognitively horrible. Um, you know, I don't think we have the right user interfaces for that. Yep, I, I, I absolutely agree. Multi-homing is a huge pain in the ass. Sorry, excuse my French. Um, but we had that same phenomena when Facebook launched. People were on MySpace, people were on Orchid, on Friendster, and for a certain period of time they were maintaining a, no a, m a number of separate accounts and kind of um, growing different personas on these sites. And then at some point all these things converged. So is this where we're going? Is this So every time there's a new app that is launched, will there be this certain period of time where people have multiple accounts, but in the end one of them will prevail? Or how do you see that? I hope not. I hope they, I hope they don't go into one. Um, I mean, in the same way, it is a pain, no question. I mean, I have five emails that I'm working with right now. and But in the same way that we have different physical spaces that we go into and behave in different ways, we can have different um, social spaces online that we go into and behave in different ways. And to me, that's an advantage, not a disadvantage, even though it requires you to remember where you are now and who am I with now. But that's part of being human, right? We associate in different ways in different places. So, so I don't think different spaces and identity are sort of like mutually exclusive. So I think if you look at the real world, you have one identity and then you have different layers with the new identity and you just decide to share different layers to different people, right? And so I think in the future what you will see is basically the online world will replicate whatever's happening in the real world. And so um, I think there will just be one sort of identity and then you decide who you want to share, you know, what kind of parts of the identity you want to share with other people. Um, but I think we don't want to go back sort of to the pre-Facebook era where you know, everybody's going to be anonymous. And I think we're very segmented into this way where um, people have sort of a passport online and you know, the, it's like their identity and it's really entrenched and Facebook is really driving this. You know, um, so, so, so yeah, so maybe if we go back to the initial question, which was what is the next Facebook? I think a really interesting question is uh, to ask yourself, um, how, how did you look at the future from the past, right? Um, so if you looked 10 years ago, um, you know, the big thing was search, as I mentioned previously, but you didn't really see Facebook coming, right? Google, Eric Schmidt always regrets that, that, you know, he hasn't invested enough into, into social networking. So like, what do you think are some sort of trends right now? And Peter Thiel likes to talk about that when he says, what are some sort of ideas that nobody agrees with you on? Like, what, do you see some companies or do you see some trends that like, you really see there's potential um, like Apple, you know, when Steve Jobs was still uh, uh, head of, of Apple, sort of like, where do you see like innovation coming from and where do you see sort of, um, you know, the sort of the next Facebook coming from? I talked to one of the guys at the Mozilla Foundation and he said they were trying to design uh, an, a, um, Internet identity, and at the user agent level. Okay. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? So, what does that mean? Um. So, your your browser is the identity, which, if if apps want to grab content from you, you. As I'm 
I mean, what, what is the basic idea? Ah. No? I'm butchering it. Um, well, the, the, the idea is that give, uh, we want to give the individual more control over their identity and what kind of information yeah. they give out. So is that sort of like what Facebook is doing with giving people more transparency over their own data? Is that what you're talking about? No. No. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm. I don't. I don't. Uh, for, for look it. Look it up. For for a long time, <laughs> we've seen this development that companies like uh, the Mozilla Foundation or even Google, Google Chrome, started to introduce this new layer of control. Um, that is between you, the user, and the operating system that would provide an identity layer uh, for the people to kind of browse the internet, to save all your passwords, to be kind of the real you that then exhibits different facets of the self to different sites online. So is, is this what we were talking about, that the browser is going to be um, yeah. kind of this, this identity layer that's going to be vital for the next social thing online? Yes. Okay. Are there any other ideas? I was going to say, I think that's fair because a lot of startups now use your social sign-in as um, your identity because they want you to tie you to some other platform so they can get as much data about you as possible. Um, and so whenever I see these, I always use my personal, well, an email because that's a, a we're kind of used to in this world having a fake account and a real account. So if you tie like things you're just trying once or twice to your fake account, you're n you don't have a lot vested there. But when you're trying something new for the first time and tying it to your real identity, People don't want to do that. Yeah. And I think startups forget that and because they need the analytics and want the analytics. So they want to know who you are exactly right off the bat. But those of us who've been around for a while don't want to give up that, our information so, so easily. Um, and so I think that's one of the things that's unpopular is like untie everything from social sign in. I'm tired of it. Like those buttons don't work for the user. They only work for the person creating the, the startup. Yeah, and even when you have to decide to tie yourself to a platform, like we are Apple users or Google users, depending on your phone, and there's a small handful of Microsoft users as well. Um, but I decided a long time ago, I, I am a Google user, so I will use the Android phone because it ties into my email, it ties into everything that I do. And it's very hard to then separate yourself on different devices with these different methods. Yeah. Um, Right, trusting the customer over time, absolutely. And, and think about the vast the, the, the data that you can get from these kind of social signs. We have a couple of marketing experts here. You know, Mike, did you want to talk about that maybe? Uh, about kind of the data that is available from these social signs and what it means for marketers and people who want to sell people products based on that data? Um, sure. Yeah. Well, First of all, I, I agree with you. I, I can't stand the social sign-in for everything. Um, one, that's a security issue. Uh, but you know, at the same time, you can get a lot of information from that in your in your own backend analytics. Um, Google Analytics, for example, has revolutionized itself in the last few years. They, they've added those variables, uh, gender, this and that, and that's because you know the advent of Chrome and, and the, the Chrome login, and it ties in everything Google, and every time you go to something Google, you have to like decide if I want to use this login or this login. Uh, you can see all these uh, statistics in the back end of the website that helps people like myself to, to identify target markets, to um, see who's using the website, what, you know, and, and actually gear the website up to cater to these age groups, you know, after you get so much data. Um, but I don't know, I, I kind of see the, the whole social media platforms kind of starting to blend together. I mean, you've seen recently how Facebook uses hashtags now. And they don't work. Well, they don't work, but 90% of the, what I was going to say is 90% of the people use them for the wrong reasons. You know, and that's what I'm trying to, there's a double-edged sword to all these different technologies. I don't think that there's going to be a, a new and better Facebook. I think that there's going to be you know, all these features kind of blended together and they're going to be used on all the platforms. So, kind of makes sense? Facebook's had 
hashtags for almost a year now, longer, they don't work. It's kind of, they don't work at all. Like you click them, they don't actually produce results. They, no, no results, because the results, um, I don't really believe it. Uh, just to follow up on the Mozilla Foundation uh, comment about like identity or browser level identity, Mozilla did do something called Persona, trying to make a way for people to use their email address as their identity without having to give everyone a username password pair. Uh, it had some success, but not a lot of success. Uh, but in general, uh, I, I'm going to say that apply the following filter. If someone's talking about some new identity system or technology or thing that's going to happen or thing that they're proposing, ask them if they're using it on their own website. And if they're not, tell them they're full of it until they are. Because they haven't figured out how to get it working. Sorry, I feel like I've been talking a lot. But the, um, I think there's a couple of things to say. I mean, the first is we were just confirming because um, so Aaron's a user experience expert, and she just confirmed to me that native logins, i.e. the ones that don't use social logins, actually have better conversions unless you're, um, unless you're actually deeply tying into the network and there's a real reason for you to log in with Twitter or whatever you're logging in with. So the, and, the, I mean, the re and the reasons to, you know, to get that data, um, I think there's a lot of disinformation. There was actually a post uh, this week, I guess, by... Um, Dustin Curtis, the creator of Subtle, um, who was talking about how really you know you need to get, gather all this information about your users in order to build uh, better products and do it sur surreptitiously. You know, basically, you know, have all the tracking codes um, and really gather all this um, all this aggregate data. It's not true. It's really not true. There are all kinds of you know explicit user research techniques that people. Uh, use to build websites where you actually get people in. You can do things, you know, when, when you have people who are, um, who are um, consenting to be part of user research, uh, you know, you can do things like eye tracking, you can do things like movement tracking, you can actually really ask them and really get a sense of what it is they're looking for and really get much, much more insightful feedback than you can out of a set of very aggregate uh, statistical data and build a better product um, out of that. The only real reason to gather that kind of information is to run targeted ads. And I would argue that targeted ads and, um, and you know, the existing crop of social networks kind of go hand in hand in a very insidious way. They're actually, you know, the, the, in many ways the existing social networks exist to gather your information in order to show ads at you, which, you know, in itself is a you know, inherently a, a, a violation of your privacy and, and, and your, your rights online. But then the users are still using, are still there? Nobody's the users are migrating to Elo, unfortunately? Are we writing up? Okay. Um, Elo does not solve any kind of problem. Um, the, no, there, need, there, there needs to be an actual crop of real alternatives, and people are, need to look at different business models uh, as part of that to actually create sustainable uh, products that take revenue that can actually empower people in different ways, in a sustainable way that is uh, founded in solid business practices. This is actually a great concluding remark, I guess. Um, we need to empower our users, right? We need to work with our users together. We can't just exploit the data they are giving. And we need real user consent rather than just, you know, the consent that because everyone is there, I have to join and I don't care about the terms and conditions, right? But, but that's something that sounds great, but who's going to do that, right? Who's going to implement that, right? It's like. Yeah, right. In theory, this is like a great idea, but then, I right, was really startups incentivized to do this, right? Yeah. So maybe to go back to the initial question again, um, anybody has any t like takes on any sort of like big ideas or anything like that? Uh, because we talk within like social networking, which is like sort of the existing paradigm. But do you guys have anything on like outside the paradigm, something different? Oh, I think something that uh, Ben is that right? Ben said, uh, making um, our communications closer to the value of a face-to-face -face interaction is uh, something that's really important and I think is a paradigm shift away from uh, the current social media or current information sharing uh, methods that we have on the internet now. Um, so I think in the future we should be looking in terms of how do we actually make that happen? How do we convey things like emotions or like humor or in more meaningful ways that create meaningful connections among people? Um, 
I mean, that's maybe sounds idealistic, but I think that is where the future should lie in these sorts of things and uh, quite possibly does lie, so. I would um, add one more sort of technology trend that is very much on the fringe, I think, right now and hasn't tipped, but maybe in the next 10 years will be something that we might see more. And that's around Duxrail's idea of VRM, vendor relationship management. So that's not something that you really see any platforms or providers doing right now because people are still trying to figure out how to make that happen. But where today we sort of live in this world where advertisers are shoving things in your face online that they want you to buy and they track what you look at online and other things that you view and purchase and try and use their algorithms to make assumptions about what you might be interested in. Um, with VRM, theoretically, it would give you as an individual the opportunity to say, I'm looking for this sort of thing. So I'm looking for a plane ticket from this airport to this airport on this day in this price range, or I'm looking to buy this kind of laptop case for this kind of laptop, or I'm looking to buy this kind of house in this price range in this neighborhood. You put out things that you're looking for, and people are able to grab that information, and they compete to give you the best possible matching product or service. So it's different than the model we have today, and it's not something that platforms and providers have really figured out how to handle or implement or use right now. So it's very much like a concept on the fringe, but I think we're getting closer to the space where people understand the general concept more, and we might in the next 10 years start to see that actually implemented more online. Yes. I would like to say I'm a bit skeptical about having one, yes, yeah, sir. I'm a bit skeptical about having one single digital identity that consolidates all our digital activities. And if we make this uh, comparison with the physical world, I mean, of course, we have one ontologically speaking and socially speaking, we have one identity. But are we aware of our single identity? That's very difficult. Maybe it requires years of psychoanalysis. I don't know. But we're aware of our uh, dispersed identities according to a specific social setting, and we adapt according to different experiences. So, I mean, that, my guess, or I don't know, one thought is that in the future, we will be even using more dispersed digital identities, and we will be so trained and used in changes through different platforms, different softwares, that will become natural to us to change and it will be maybe it becomes so much natural to us that we will not we will think thinking we'll be thinking directly algorithmically ourselves so we won't be able to understand that we you know uh, now we're using a different software or it, it will be natural for us yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah. any any other final thoughts on this yeah. uh, I'm, um, uh, this, this big change that we are um, into uh, is, uh, is, uh, is considered market-driven, you know? Uh, but uh, I think that uh, there is, a, I can, I can uh, feel some, uh, um, uh, this kind of resisting data, uh, of obfuscating data, and uh, maybe uh, there is, uh, uh, I heard about a software named uh, Track Me No, uh, that is, uh, uh, maybe there is a, a kind of, uh, 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 it will be a kind of, uh, um, you know, individual empowerment. Uh, 